all that business, I gotta fly my people Way too many fakes in my face, I can see the evils Drug addictions, bad bitches, they gotta be jokes See the pico, black flags, it's all What's good, yo, we back, RTTV What's good, yo, we back, RTTV Yes, yes sir Dang. It was your first time here, definitely won't be your last Make sure you kill, murder, and smash That subscribe button, all that podcast button Facts. And make sure you check out that Patreon. We got early and full reactions to anime, live action shows, and more. Don't miss out. Support the gang. The link is right down below. And make sure you give this video a like and have that notification bell ringing for the podcast playlist. And also make sure you follow us on Twitch. RTTV5. We react to some of your favorite movies, TV shows, and play some of your favorite video games. So follow, subscribe, RTTV5. And we are back with That Settles It Podcast Episode 2. And on this podcast, we cover... All kinds of media, everything from our channel. So it could go from music, it could go from anime, yeah. it could go from fashion, it could go from sports, it could go from news, it could go from what's really going on and what's really serious. We're going to cover everything on here. And episode two is titled Black Lives Matter. Should K pop, rappers, and influencers speak up? And let's get into this episode. Yep. And today, guys, we're going to start it off. There's a lot been going on in the world right now. Mm -hmm. We hope that everyone is staying safe and being positive throughout this time. As we know it's a difficult time. And the events that occurred on May 25th, 2020, where an uh, innocent black man was brutally killed by a police officer, George Floyd, was um, on May 25th. Went into a convenience store and I guess um, they said that he had counterfeit bills. They called police um, over. Uh, two different stories. The police say that he was resisting arrest. Some people say he wasn't. But luckily there was cameras and there was uh, surveillances. And we seen that when he was um, being arrested, he was placed on the floor. And the police officer put his knee on the back of his neck for nine minutes. And usually they say to... Um, pass out or die from a chokehold is six minutes so mm -hmm. he went even minutes after he would initially die and the problem um, with this going on is that a lot of people feel like this is something that's never changing and when George Floyd was dying he repeated on the floor I can't breathe and it takes a lot of people back because in 2014 Eric Gardner mm -hmm. same situation I can't breathe police officer brutally killed him and it was also recorded, and it's six years later. So some of us were 22, Pat was 21 mm -hmm. at yeah. that time. And six mm -hmm. years later, it's an, enough is enough. I, the world, not just black people, not just white people, not just girls, not just guys, not just the new millennials. I think the whole entire world could just easily say, it's enough is enough. Like the whole racism thing, everything that's going on in the world, we have so many bigger problems because we're in a pandemic right now, yeah. the coronavirus. And I feel like it impacted people so differently because we're in a crisis that has nothing to do with race. Mm -hmm. And people are still, like, you guys are still feel like that, still want to show, display that. And it's just enough is enough. And I personally feel like, for me, seeing everything that's going on and everyone in our channel wanted us to speak about it. And we just want to get a proper platform to sit here and actually have a real conversation. Mm -hmm. So, fellas, let's get into it. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy because um, Snoop Dogg posted something that I feel like was so real. Like, he was like, yo, this situation is like a divine intervention because it's like, it's crazy how, like, the moment that the world is basically all on social media because nobody can get outside, something like this, something as tra tragic as this occurs. So it's like, we're all forced to see the situation. Mm -hmm. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, all the moments before, people can say that, yo, they didn't see... All the different, all the different casualties has occurred due like due to oppression, and police brutality. But this moment, nobody can ignore it, and I feel like that's why when it comes to like influencers, rappers, K-pop, all these people, they feel more pressure than ever to speak up. Yeah, and it's like because like right now, like fans that's like all that's prominently African American or different descents, nigga, like. A lot of these people, like, the culture of what they do is spawned from African Americans. So you would think the people that, like, is a part of your success, you'll be, be there for them as soon as something like this happens, mm -hmm. a crisis and shit like that. So that's why it's, like, it's dope to see all the people that stepped up to the table during this moment right here when we needed it the most, especially. Yeah, and I feel what you're saying, because I feel like um, growing up, I feel like we all had the experience where 
our parents have told us, watch out for cops. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it almost became a regular thing for us because, to be honest, like a cop fucking with me or fucking with one of my friends, mm-hmm. it's normal. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm the sure. fact that we got to live our everyday life um, knowing that, because we still got to work, we still got to go to school, yeah. we have so much more to worry about, and then cops added on to that, like, I'm I'm glad, like, rest in peace, George Floyd, that that, that shit was captured on film, yeah. that we live in a, a millennial um, era. era, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. where that information goes viral, because if you date back to, like, Rodney King, the only reason we, we started protests is because there was a video exactly, of it, and that yeah. was early back in the day, so I'm, I'm just glad that People are being proactive, even though, like, I don't blame them for not jumping in and trying to stop them because they would have probably lost their life. Yep. But, like, at least capturing it for, so that the whole world could see and try to make a change because we're used to, we're used to this shit. And, we're, and honestly, like, without um, having the power to band together, mm-hmm. we probably wouldn't be able to get over this hurt. Facts, hurt, of you know course. What I'm and, like, speaking, speaking on influencers and just higher-ups and organizations, I was... Um, Listening to something earlier today, like a, it was um, a, a donkey of the day, and it had to do with the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell. Mm-hmm. And they talked about, he pretty much was like, Roger Goodell came out and made a statement, and he's like, well, we apologize for anybody who, um, who, um, what you call it, who was trying to stand up for what's right, and we handled it terribly. Now, one of the perfect things that um, was brought up, and I agree with this too, like, the first thing we need to expand, we need to extend that apology to somebody like Colin Kaepernick, who mm-hmm. was clearly Directly. like, yeah, who was clearly like intentionally blackballed from the NFL after he did a peaceful protest, right? Mm-hmm. And he's been saying the same thing for years. It's like it's not about I'm doing this, I'm doing this to emulate peace throughout mm-hmm. the um, throughout the world, so people could just know. And it not it doesn't even just go beyond Black Lives Matters because like a lot of executives can come out and be like, well. Um, well, Black Lives Matters, we care about our black people, we care about our black players. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, like the NFL. So I mean, he made another good point. He's like, 70% of the NFL players are black, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's the majority of them. But, like, what about the owners? You know what I'm saying? Do we have, we have one black owner in the NFL? Are we going to extend, aside from just tweeting Black Lives Matters, mm-hmm. we as higher, the higher ups should be extending those opportunities mm-hmm. to black brothers and sisters out there. Exactly. So, like, it should just be more than just a tweet, a statement. Right. We should be showing it, we should be expressing it within um, within job opportunities, within school opportunities, because if not, then, like, what, what really changed? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because it's like, it's easy to say something, and some of these organizations are looking at it as something to do for marketing you know what i'm saying whereas it's like yo what could you ask what other what else are you going to do what other steps are you going to take mm-hmm. in order to ensure that we are treated equally because that's what it's about at the end of the day mm-hmm. yeah it, it definitely shows everything that that's going on in the world like things haven't changed you could say and bringing them down like sports athletes like the nfl we could put that to like influences but like we're gonna like break down influencers, K-pop idols, and and artists. And influencers is really easy for us because we're influencers. So we're just gonna talk about why. Like, should we speak up personally? Like, yeah. Should, mm-hmm. should Joel speak up? Should Jerry speak up? Should Pat speak up? Should Rob speak up? Should Evan speak up? And we are definitely gonna speak up because we've been through it. I feel like black and Spanish people together, like. I could be this skin color. Me and him would get the same issues. The cops would give us the same issues. And he's Mm -hmm. being Spanish and me being black. And I feel like being from where I'm from, Providence, Rhode Island, and growing up in the inner city, since I was a kid, I always was, uh, always raised like, yo, watch out for cops. Like, stay away because they might think you're doing something just because the way you look. Mm -hmm. And I never, I never understood, I never thought, like, when I was younger, I used to think, yo, is it because, like, I dressed like a rapper or something? People would say that. Mm -hmm. And it'd be like, I would see people get harassed by cops that are dressed properly, that are dressed preppy. So, growing up, it's two biggest uh, racial things that occurred to me with police brutality is one time in college, I was driving with um, my Edwin, who used to be on this channel, and one of my friends who was Caucasian, his name is Kyle, which is really good because he was shocked this happened. So, I, we was driving back from, um, we lived on campus, which was 45 minutes away. We were driving back um, home. And I was dropping my friend Edwin off, and literally we just see a, a car coming, lights flashing, just flashing, flashing us like like a, and it, mind you, it's not a cop car, so it's like what is going <laughs> on? Mm-hmm. These two of them just pull up and get out the car, and they just literally run to us and literally open the door, and get out, get out, get out, get out. Where's the guns? Where's the guns? Where's the knives? 
And I'm like, what's going on? And it was undercover, undercover detectives. And they literally just stopped the car. Not, yo, let me see. Let's, it literally pulled us out the car, waste the gun, and they just searched my car. Like, literally. And like, without I, permission. Without mm-hmm. permission at all. Like, it's, this is illegal. Like, literally, literally, they just stopped the car, get out. Like, usually a cop don't come to you and be like, get, like let me see you. Uh, get out, pull this out. And the whole time I'm, um, I'm getting put out, me and Edwin, I'm, everything I love, if me, Edwin, and my friend Kyle, it was what up? Like, honestly, I wasn't scared. It was just like, yeah, jump I, off boys. I, yeah. Jump <laughs> boys. Yeah, I was do that to niggas. But my friend Kyle, who was white, was in the car. And the way he, like, he was shaking. And, like, he didn't, and, like, it was like, what is going on? And I'm like, yo, me, I don't believe your car. Relax. Just, we don't got, like, I was smiling at the car because I know I don't got, like, when yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. have anything like That's that. The I'm best so I was like, <laughs> go ahead. Like, I'm smiling. And literally, when they didn't find nothing, they didn't say anything. They didn't say get back your car. No, they didn't find out. They just walk in their car and flex. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's me, how they be doing me, it. Me, Edwin, um, and Kyle hopped in the car and we pull in. And I'm like, it's whatever. Like, I'm really trying to explain to me, like, this does not affect me. Like, and Kyle's like, yo, guys, like, what the fuck is that? Like, what is going on? Like, they can't do that. Like, that's so, like, that's racist, man. You don't think that, like, what? Like, and I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm saying, I'm like, yo, I'm going to keep, I'm like, yo, honestly, Kyle, I'm going to keep it a buck with you, bro. Yo, that's his life. Like, I literally say that, like, but the thing, like, I was, like, 22, probably, that's probably at Garner time, I was 22. Being 28, I didn't realize it was really an issue because that shit is normal, like, it was just normal oh, to me. Like, it really <laughs> wasn't a crazy, like, even me saying a crazy incident that happened, I don't even, like, the, the worst stuff I see happening to people with cops, I'm like, yo, last night even nothing, but, like. Seeing everything now, I, I feel like as black young men, we're programmed. Some of us, not all of us, mm-hmm. minorities are programmed to think that's just normal, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, if they punch you in the face, at least they ain't kill you. Keep yeah. moving. Mm-hmm. Like, you feel me? And I'm like, at 28, th- like, honestly, from this going on now, I'm like, yo, maybe I should be less acceptable to, like, how like how do I feel like this is normal? Like, how do like, and I don't want, uh, and, like, it's just my whole life. And I feel like even with parents, like, having um kids and stuff like my parents and like my mother before i moved out rest her soul she passed away she was even like to me she's only advice my mom gave me moving to la and it's crazy because it made me think about it now was one it's the simplest thing and like she all she said to me the only advice my mom gave me was robbie just remember that you're black wow that's literally like, <laughs> wow and that, that's literally what she said yeah. to me and i'm like she's yeah. like you know how that just re-. my mom didn't mm-hmm. say yo don't spend like this is literally crossing country. Like she didn't think anything could happen to me. Like partying, like anything. The only thing she literally was like, mm-hmm. "Yo, this is something that either of us have control over. Just be aware you're going to another state." And remember, like, and I'm like, I really, like that's the only advice I literally just remembered it now. And I'm like, wow, like mothers really fathers of kids. And I feel like with us growing up, I feel like. We're getting past the point where it's not about us anymore. It's more about when we have things. Exactly. When they're out and about. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the fact that she really was fair of that, I hate that the world is... Because it's like, she wasn't fair of anything because she trusts her son. But that's something she, no one has control of. And it's like, they they could be racist to. And just to um, finish up my story real quick, it's from Providence, Rhode Island, moving to LA. I'm not going to lie, my hometown to me is way more racist than LA. Like, oh, and, I, I th- and I feel like for sure. Absolutely. me coming out here, I like the mom advice was good because where I came from. And I feel like in L.A., don't get me wrong, police brutality and everything occurs. But I feel like it's more you just see more success out here from black people. So I feel like they just treat it a little bit better, not completely better. But back home is like and if I drive I, I, and I can see a cop, I'm 80 percent. Yeah, that's a fact. Over yeah. here is not like that. Yeah, yeah. and that's. My story on it, and I feel like we should speak of it. And that's my story, and I, that's my problem. I realize, like me thinking it's normal, and I have to fight that mentality, pretty much. Yeah, and it's funny. It's funny that you said that because I had a uh, kind of similar experience with um, uh, one of the jump out boys, is what we called them. Like I had never dealt with them in my life, like ever in my life. And I remember prior to that, it was crazy because like two weeks before, I had come from football practice, and a regular cop. I was just waiting on, I was at the corner store waiting for my mom to pick me up. And a regular cop came up to me and was like, 
where you going? And I'm like, oh, I'm just waiting for my mom to pick me up. But I didn't think anything of it because I'm just like, it's a cop. He's asking me a question. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to answer and I'm going to comply with him. Now, the experience with the DT, um, I'm walking to a friend's house and a random car just goes up next to me and I'm just like, okay, right? And then the guy's like, where you going? And I'm just like, who, who are you? Like, that's all I'm thinking <laughs> in my mind. Like, I'm like, that way? Like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> like, and I literally, the dude jumped out the car. So my first instinct is like, yo, I'm by myself. I'm out. Like, <laughs> like, no, like, go, go. like I, don't know, I don't know what to think. And I'm like, yo, all right, this random person is chasing me. He's obviously trying to get me. Like, I'm going to run to Walgreens. There's light. He's going to stop chasing me. I turn around. He's still chasing me. I'm like, why is this guy still chasing me? Right? So then I stop and I'm just like, yo, what is going on? Then I see it says on the letters, mm. it says Providence Police. And I'm just like, yo, I've never seen these guys. And I promise yeah. you on everything. I've never seen these guys before in my life. Mm. So I'm just like, yo, are they really cops? Like, I'm just in shock, right? Yeah. And they're yeah. like, oh, what's your name? I'm like, Jerry. I'm like, Jerry. They're like, you're lying. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> um, it's oh, like, God, you don't have anything on you? I'm like, no, you're lying. I'm like, oh. What? <laughs> like, and I remember at the time, because I didn't have my ID on me at the time, but like, I remember at the time they called my mom and I just wanted to go to a party. And at first I didn't think anything of it, but my mom was really, really scared. And she's like, and she told my dad, and we're like, we're bringing this to eternal affairs. I went to school. It's funny how Robbie, when Robbie said, yo, I thought this was normal, I went to school and I told my friends about it. And they're like, what's wrong with you? Why would you run away from a DT? Like, yo, it's like, why would you even report them? You know nothing's gonna happen. Like, yo, they took, they took, um, they brought up a kid that we was cool with. They was like, they took him to the back alley and they beat on him. Like, yo, they just beat on him for no reason. Like, and I'm just like, and I'm just looking at him. I'm like, what do you mean they ain't gonna, there's nothing that we can do about it? There's obviously something that needs to be done because this is crazy. Like, I remember at the time thinking, like, that is absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I kind of got chased essentially. Like, ran up on for no reason. And I was just walking to a friend's house just yeah. trying to go to a party. Like, yeah, I was... Sure. And it's like, it's really crazy. It's really crazy how to, to us that is, like, that's normal. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When at no point in time, where it, at no point in time is that okay, like, to just be like, all right, well, the, because this person looks like this, I'm just going to assume and we're going to find something, right? So this is how we do our job and this is how we're taught. Because this is how this person looks, the area that they're walking in, they're just bad people. And that's not really good. That's not that's not a good thing to perceive people yeah. like that in general. Yeah. I agree. And uh, th- like hearing your both of y'all stories, it just makes me think about some of the decisions my friends or like some of the decisions we even made as a group mm-hmm. um, that we the decisions we made that affected us. Um, like recently, I'm gonna just say recently. Um, we moved to uh, to California, right? Yeah. We drove here from Rhode Island to California, and you you realize the route we took was we drove up north. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the reason why we drove up north was because racist south. That's what we heard. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cops are racist down south. We're minorities. We're black. We Facts. probably don't want to take a road trip down south and get caught up with the police. Yeah. That's one thing. You know what I'm saying? And mind you, when we drove in Denver, that was one of the scariest times. Because <laughs> driving in the mountains, no joke. You know what I'm saying? So like, I actually endangered my life because of a decision we made consciously to avoid cops down south. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Another, another thing, uh, when I was young, I remember driving around with my friend Winfield in Providence, Rhode Island. And, you know, in Rhode Island, it's New England. It gets really cold out there. It's a mm-hmm. cold day. Yep. I have my hoodie on in his car. Mm-hmm. And he tells me, he says, yo, Wells, you should take off your hoodie. I'm like, bro, it's cold outside. He's like, yo, I don't want to get pulled over by a cop. So, it's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. even it's like, we can't wear a hoodie inside of a car. Yo, no. You know what I'm saying? Without even thinking, yo, I might get pulled over if you look suspicious mm-hmm. in, a, in a car that um, they would say we normally drive, a Toyota Camry. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's yep. like... That that right there is like that fear that um, yo cops are gonna be watching or, co- or decisions we make every day are affected because of this fear that we've grown to have for cops. So that that's just like thinking hearing y'all stories that just made me think about like wow like mm-hmm. I never even thought about you saying yeah, that yeah. Yeah, right right nah, it's wild bro because the thing is this shit goes so deep bro because it's like if you think about it they're like normalizing dehumanization. You yeah. get me? And it's like, how is it that, like, for this long, bro, like, having so many prominent, like, minority figures, we're still having to, like, like, that, um, the, the comedy that we was watching with Michael Chi, mm-hmm. how it's like, we're still trying to prove and show that we matter. Yeah. You feel me? Like, that's the craziest shit to me. It's like, we are, we're at a point that we have to debate 
the fact that like yo it's not cool for us to get killed innocently and that is okay like that's tapped to me and it's like the thing that that like with my like my experience in my life is when it comes to like my brothers and shit like that it's like them being incarcerated and shit like that multiple times and there's a lot of times that they got locked up on some bullshit you feel yeah. me and it's like to this day like i have the absence of my brother in my life and shit like that because of the the systematic structure that they create in the judicial system to make sure that once you get in that motherfucker once you going to get in that like the rotation of yeah. going through that judicial system and going like being locked up and it's like it fucks me up i remember one time a nigga got locked up because being around people but didn't do shit mm. like it was looked at i was like all right since you're in this situation since you have a prior record even though you probably didn't do anything we're gonna lock you up again that's and that's three extra years that this nigga's gone from me, his parents, his kids, his friends and shit. And I feel like it's just, we're stuck in a paradigm that's caused by, like, the higher-ups that we're not even a part of. Mm-hmm. Like, there's statistics that show that the political leaders that run all the shit, niggas, 97% of them are white. The fuck are we gonna do if we're not a part of the like the, the judgment or the decision making that allow us to get the opportunities and give us the you know the value that we deserve as a human being you know? Because right. and talking about seeing the value of the, as a human being, a being, George Floyd the video I can't even watch that. I never watched the video. I Yo, the I haven't either, bro. Because it, that's one of the scariest videos because I felt like I've seen a, a video of George Floyd just just talking like regular. And he was just like, yo, how to everybody? He was just mad positive. Mm-hmm. He was like, yo, uh, I know. He's like, I just got back in the gym. I'm working out, but I'm getting better, man. You know, you can always do it. Like, he was really being motivational, That's giving tough. some stuff. And he was like, yo, you know, I've been through tough times, but, you know, I'm going to make it through. And I hope everybody listening to this, you guys can make it through too and stuff. I'm like, that was really a nice guy. And it scares me seeing that video because I know it. I could be at the wrong place at the wrong time mm. and that could literally be me. Mm-hmm. Like, that could literally be me. The Nick cops got me down and there's nothing I could do. My neck press and I'm like, why? Like, seeing that, it just would make, like, I don't want to envision something that I know this could be, like, if I go out in the world, this could be a high chance just me being at the wrong place at the mm-hmm. wrong time. Like, a counterfeit bill to kill. Like, no matter even if he used a counterfeit yes. bill. You're going to murder somebody for a counterfeit mm-hmm. bill. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it, it, just seeing that and seeing how the world affected the world, this is the biggest protest that we've seen since the Civil Rights Movement. And over 75 places around the world, from cities and countries, mm-hmm. all pro- protesting. And his daughter was dope because his daughter was like, Daddy, um, you changed the world. And mm-hmm. it's like, he did change the world. And I like that he was such a positive guy because his vibe went on the world. Cause it was, and it was like, no one knew him, but we know that was a genuinely good person. Exactly. So yeah. that's why everyone is rallying together, and it's dope to see at the protests all around the world, people coming together and show support. And then to still see how the cops and the media could portray with looting and everything going on, and and for history, a lot of stuff repeats itself. Mm-hmm. Different situations happen, different scenarios, but similar in aspects. And even when Martin Luther King died, there was riots were all over the country. I mean, all over the cities, the countries. It got $47 million in damages. And then six days later, um, the Civil Rights Bill was passed. Mm-hmm. So it's been proven that when shit hits the fan, this way of protesting the positive and the looting way is something that's been part of American culture. So we shouldn't be sh- surprised when something like this happened and you get two forms of protesting. Because you're getting people who are uh, past heated and just want to tear everything up. And then you have the people that want to stand up and and make a change. And the way someone reacts to what you do to them, you can't... People have different reactions. And I feel like those are two different reactions. And I can't be mad at the people. Because at the end of the day, this shit didn't happen. They wouldn't just be out there looting. It's not Mm -hmm. like niggas just be out Mm -hmm. there looting. And even with the protesting, with the coronavirus and everybody mm-hmm. um, scared on that t- terms, and it was like, enough is enough. And even with the president we have, I'm not a political guy, and I'm not saying who to vote for or anything, but I just feel like a human being, being a Republican, being a Trump supporter, whatever, at the end of the day, we all know to say go shoot 
looters to go and attack looters. I just yeah. feel like when that's been part of American culture, like niggas loot when niggas win championships and we don't go shoot them. Why yeah. for protests? And I just feel like I don't ha- like I don't want. I'm not gonna speak anything on politics because that's not my me. And that's the only thing I can say. I don't have. I don't care about anything Donald Trump does. But bro, like be a human. Where it's like looting is part of our culture, and I feel like that is what's making people aggressive. Like, wait, he's gonna shoot us? Nah, let's take. Like, yeah, it's, it's even like, worse. <laughs> it's like you know, pushing. Like I'm pushing you. All right, push me back, and then. I right, who's gonna swing? Mm-hmm. We ain't gonna keep pushing each other, and then yeah. someone's gonna swing. And I don't feel like we're at the swinging part, but I don't want it to be at the swinging. Like I don't ever want it to be at the swinging part. I feel like we should just we already going through coronavirus. Let's handle this and handle um what's going on. And I feel like protesting, seeing this generation, because everybody said this generation was tr- uh say we're trash. We care about party and turning up, mm-hmm. and to have one of the biggest. In my 20s, I've seen so many protests, my nigga. I, yeah, like, this is the I feel like I'm in the civil rights, like, low-key, because mm-hmm. at the end of it, this is just a new form of it. And our generation really cares, and I just feel like we, this humanity, this shit just shows me there's humanity in humans. Yeah. And this, you cannot tell me, because mm-hmm. at the end of niggas, niggas, it's coronavirus. Niggas don't have to be outside, like, <laughs> 10,000 people protesting, and it's like, don't tell me that the world doesn't have hope. Don't tell me that there's not, that protest proved it, and we needed that. Yeah, I think it's very beautiful. Like the global globalization that we're seeing right now is amazing. And that's it's dope that you brought up the the looting aspect because y'all heard about the whole situation with um with Virgil. Yeah, when when he donated the fifty dollars. Nah, before that. So before that, he basically made a comment saying that like, yo, I think the first of course he said Black Lives Matter. This is a person that's prominent within like the black the African American culture. I mean, the first Mm -hmm. creative director. A little bit time to be black, you feel yeah. me? So everybody will obviously look at this nigga like, what what's his position on this right here? So he says Black Lives Matter, but then he also like extended it by saying like, yo, by the way, I don't think it's good that you guys are looting because you're causing a backlash to our community. And but at first he was talking about his store and stuff like that, and then so people took it negatively because it was like, yo, right now you. You talk. You talking about your store, my nigga. We got bigger issues than your store and these and the, like these uh, businesses. Mm-hmm. And at first, I understood him, but then like after, I'm like, nah, he bugged out because it's like you can't be mad at people being mad for something like this, yeah. bro. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's something that's so catastrophic. It's something that's happened so long. Like we had influencers fucking way back. We had Tupac rapping about this shit and talking about it in interviews and saying that. Yo, at a certain point in time, yo, we're going to come through fucking shit up and stuff like that if you violate us continuously. So, like, with Virgil, he had a stance that I feel like was, at that timing, terrible timing, even mm-hmm. though I knew where he was coming from. And then he went on to doing the $50. But that $50 thing was also misconstrued because of the fact that that was just like, you know how they do the chains, like, donate 50, donate 50. Yeah. He donated a 50 to be a part of that chain of friends that was doing that. But it also he showed documentation of him donating twenty thousand dollars exactly. to different programs. So I feel like at this moment of time, like with influencers, because like I mean obviously we gotta talk about stuff like this. You feel me? People's gonna have their own way of protesting. Some people can't articulate their words, so they're not gonna sit there and get in front of a camera and like say a, a soliloquy about this right. Here, but yeah. they can donate or they can put in their arts. Make a painting or something like that. Use the proceeds to go. But it's like, I feel like with social media, there's so much of a box of you have to show it that people get scrutinized when we don't see it, even though they could be doing it behind closed Mm -hmm. doors. Yeah. You feel me? I was saying before, I was like, yo, niggas could come at Kendrick, but he was was protesting. But at the time, I was like, like, niggas was coming like, oh, what's Kendrick going to do? I'm like, hey, you don't know what he's doing behind closed doors. All we know, (laughs) that nigga could be whipping up another to pimp the butterfly, and Mm -hmm. then album sales go right to donations. So, like, I would say, like, at this moment in time, we got to be, like, kind of, like, considerate of the possibilities of these public figures can be doing things behind closed doors. But do you guys feel like they have to show what no, they're I, doing? I don't, I, don't think, they, I don't think they have to. Um, I think it's important for people to say, you know, like, I need people to speak up and, you know, to get that information out there. But I don't think it's fair to scrutinize if you don't see it. Yeah. Because if you didn't see it, it doesn't mean that they're not doing it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that also takes away from the narrative of what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you come yeah. to some other people like, well, well, I don't see you doing this. I don't see you doing that. That's not what the message is. The message mm-hmm. is do something. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Yep. And like, if I don't see it, doesn't mean I didn't do it. 
You know, we, we're putting out a podcast right now. We want to we want to spread our message, like our experiences out there. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying other like you were saying, other people have other ways to really get their message relayed, whether it be in donations. Mm-hmm. Other people can't speak up because maybe that they can't articulate. Yeah. Maybe they'll say the wrong thing. Exactly. But they didn't mean to. You know, what I'm saying so. Like we have to be mindful of situations like that, and then just learn how to just accept people for who they are. If they don't, and I think. I'll save that for a later conversation because, like, I was also saying, like, if you do see something like White Lives Matter oh, and yeah. shit like that, then I, I feel you, like, you, you need <laughs> you to come at that. those type of people all the way because I feel like anybody who's against this All Black Matters movement is really saying that they don't fuck with Black Matters, yeah. Black Lives, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yo, because it's never, like, it's yeah. never been a conversation about... Um, that they black lives matter black lives matter more than all. It's just like yo, we matter too, and that needs to be a point made. And it's, if you say white lies or blue lies, is really, you're really just going against. Yeah, the you're black distracting people. the yeah. fucking shit. Yeah, <laughs> or just the fact that black people matter. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy to me. Like I don't understand that shit. And kind of piggybacking off of what you said with the whole like what people are doing behind the scenes. You're absolutely right because. You're absolutely right because, like, at the end of the day, the narrative is to the is getting our equality. You know what I'm saying? Let's focus on equality. We don't know what everybody else is doing behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. We don't know how people are approaching these situations because everybody is different. Everybody has their different approach. Um, my my biggest thing, my biggest thing with this, the biggest thing is just seeing the protests and seeing all these people out here taking action, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And people taking initiative and how this is just the biggest protest within themselves. Everybody's coming out. They feel they need to speak. They feel needs to do something. And like, there's other ways that people could like express it with like, even, even presenting opportunities, not even just donating, but just presenting opportunities mm-hmm. as influencers for these people, for um, minorities. You know what I'm saying? Just, just in general. Like, so we could just get the, so we could, cause that's something that's big too. We could get the ball rolling. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We could get it. We could, we could make this bigger than just a protest. We can make it bigger than just the loot. We could just make it, we could show dominance. You know what I'm saying? In everything that we're doing in mm-hmm. all different aspects. Like, and it's, it's a good thing that this is happening. It's a good thing that this is happening now. And we're continuing and continuing, continuing the fighting. Granted, like with the, what I think is that it's kind of crazy like I, I find it so crazy, but I can't really control how people, other people think that people are actually like truly sincerely against this. That some people, that mm-hmm. some people have, have actually made this. Certain okay. certain people have actually um, behind the scenes. If you see like the like a lot of the, I'm seeing a lot more racism come out now. Like because some people are even making this, turning this into a joke, where it's like mm-hmm. there's nothing funny about this at all. You hey. know what I'm saying? Especially like when I see when I see certain things like certain perspective when I see certain things like when people were making a joke about um the about the knee about um what you would call it, what happened to George Floyd and there was one lady who came out and said something like first of all you don't just suffocate then you don't just suffocate when somebody has a knee on your head I'm this that and third and it just bothers me because it's just like yo at the end of the day let's think about it from human beings from a human being standpoint if that was your family member how would you feel exactly. like how would you feel you know what I'm saying like you wouldn't sit here and want people to argue with you mm-hmm. I don't wish anything bad on anybody you know what I'm saying like period point blank like you wouldn't want the same thing to happen to you so think about it Think about it from think about it from your perspective. You know what I'm saying? Like, what would you? How would you feel if you were in those shoes? Right. And like, a lot of people don't truly don't know how they would feel. Like, until how it really feels home. until it's close to home or until they've actually been experienced being black in America. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, the fact that people aren't even doing anything, whether it's behind the scenes, closed doors, we out here, we're doing something and we're creating, we're creating something that's bigger than all of us yeah. in the grand scheme of things. You know? Yeah. It definitely, from what you're, you're saying, from the hashtags and the Black Lives, um, Black Lives Matter, the White Lives Matter, all the different hashtags and stuff, and it gets into um, the second part we're going to get into is um, K-pop idols and K-pop fans should they mm. speak up? And before we even start, we'll get into um, our friends that don't know what K-pop is. It's a very popular music um, coming from Korea. Well, it's one of the biggest music in the world. It has a lot of dope music. And a lot of the culture people will say it gets inspired from the black culture. So a lot of people were like, yo, K-pop idols have to speak up. The K-pop fans have to speak up. And before, going into the K-pop world, um, when we first started, even when we first started, we was like, yo, we're going to get into this music. But maybe these people, maybe who knows if people are going to really watch us. Because like, mm-hmm. the, the rumor prior going in is that 
is racist. Like people in, and the artists are racist. That the music's racist. The fans are racist. And I feel like going into it, we were more like, let's see how this goes. Like we, we like learning new music. We like to experience it. And going into it, we will fully embrace. And I was shocked. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, yo, you guys really rock with us. Yeah. Like, I never thought. Like I just like I just feel like certain music. Like let's say some certain Caucasian like girls or uh, young kids. You probably won't think like, oh, maybe they probably not gonna rock because just because I'm black, whatever. Mm. And you would think that too with the Korean culture. And seeing the complete opposite occur, seeing them pay homage to hip hop artists, and seeing all the fans come together and show so much support. Going to KCON, I'm not gonna lie, I'm like, yo, that, yeah, we're gonna go to KCON. Yep. I don't know <laughs> what don't kind know. of culture we're about to see when we walk in, like, and walking in, it was so much. It was. White, Spanish, black, mm -hmm. you know, so much black um K pop fans and I'm yeah. not gonna lie, I'm like, yo, it's really mad black K pop. Yeah, I, I remember Robbie <laughs> saying that. He said exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> it looked around just like that. Yo, it's really mad. mad <laughs> and I'm like, yo, it, it felt go dope and it felt good because I feel like we w this is a, a culture that is more embracing, unlike let's say country. Yeah. Like, like low like you know what I'm saying? Like it's harder for them to accept, and I feel like the fans showed out because everyone's like, yo, what could K-pop fans, they have, like, the biggest uh, fan base, K-pop idols, and the dopest thing i seen recently that occurred this week, the K-pop fans were, like, combating the hashtags, White Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, and, like, there was, like, police uh, radio that they were like, oh, please send us um, any uh, violence you see from protests but it was, like, fake because no one was actually doing it. Mm -hmm. And they were inter um, interpreting and putting, like, sound clips, videos of the boy band, the girl bands. Mm -hmm. And it was dope because they literally utilized all the K-pop savvy things they know how to do online. They literally used it to combat injustice. And I feel like it's so dope. Like, the K-pop friends were literally superheroes, in a sense, <laughs> online. And it was so dope to see them come together. And it shows that whoever was prior in the comments or before, like, yo, K-pop is racist, this and that. The fans, 2020, I can say, is changing. If it was yeah. like that, it definitely changed. And it's only going to change for the better. And we appreciate all the K-pop fans to allow us to come in. Because even when we went to KCON, people were coming to me. I remember my girl saying, can I take a picture with you guys? You know, black K-pop fans? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. remember that. <laughs> it, was like, it was so embracing. Like, you guys helped us feel comfortable there. And I feel like the K-pop community is so supportive of Black Lives Matter. And I'm happy about that. And K-pop idols are speaking out. And BTS donated a million dollars to the Black Lives Matter. Yeah. It was one of we're biggest fans of. We have a lot of content from them on our channel. Facts. And it's great to see that they, because we care about them. They care about, we care about their music. We support them as kids. Like, they truly care. And, like, they even gave their fans, like, yo, do this. Like, giving them encouragement. And, you know, they had to be, right they there. had to bring them, put them right there. So, <laughs> they just salute to the K-pop idols for BTS. I know um, they're speaking out. I'm not sure if any more of you guys know, oh, yeah. but in the comments, I please it. let us know. And if Pat knows some more. Yeah, yeah so CL, mm -hmm. CL hold it down. She um, she basically you know said her piece about you know showing her support. There's a lot of actually different people like um, Mark from Got Seven. He donated seven thousand dollars and everything mm -hmm. like that. Um, Tay uh, Ta Yang. From from uh, what do you call it for Big Bang? It's like uh, tell you, shout out. yeah, bro. So um, there was a uh, what do you call it? There was a um uh what's the uh a specialist within um the pop culture within Korea that said yo typically that um the K-pop idols are very like timid about fully speaking out about political things like this. Mm -hmm. He said like he said that this is the most they've ever spoke about any type of political global affair and stuff. So it was really amazing that. The K-pop idols, and especially the K-pop fans, because the K-pop fans, yo, we know they're probably one of the most, com the most passionate fans ever. Like they go hard. Like when I say they go hard for like their, their like their idols, they go hard. And like seeing them, how they basically transfer their passion of idols towards something like this, man, that is nothing less than amazing. Yeah, CL, she did her thing because I feel like not only did she speak up about it, but she also like gave recognition. To the people she looked up to oh, um, in that. the black community. Right. She, she, she referenced uh, Beyonce, mm. Missy Elliott, Janet Jackson, Lil Kim. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like she, she's like, Yo, I look up to a lot of these people. And like, she even broke it down to like, like why? Like 
this yeah. person influenced me in this way. Yeah. And, you know, this person influenced me in this way. And she even encouraged other K-pop members in the community um, to speak up about it because it's not a mystery that, you know, K-pop was influenced yeah. by hip hop exactly. you know what I'm saying like, it's like a, you can't deny that you know what I'm saying like the main culture in the United States and mostly around the world comes from hip hop which is yeah. derived in black culture you yeah. know what I'm saying so I feel like we can't ignore that and it was cool to see that K-pop fans you know how strong they were in drowning out the information that white uh, lives matter mm-hmm. hashtag and blue lives matter uh, hashtag was trying to portray it was dope to see them kind of be like you know what this is my way of protesting too if they if people were actually searching this hashtag to get information on what these people were doing, mm-hmm. now you can't see it. You're gonna see a bunch of K-pop people. Saying, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're not gonna get that information. And then also shout out to the BTS army because we did see um, BTS donate one million dollars, and the yeah. next day BTS army uh, raised another million. Yeah, that's in 24 yeah. hours. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, no, I was that was that. Okay. Um, and so, like, we even got to see, like, Monster XA even reached out to other to some of their minority fans and spoke to them, like, mm. regarding the issue. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. dope to see, like, K-pop artists, like, K-pop artists, K-pop fans reaching out. Because one of the biggest things with me is that, like, with, with and some may experience more discrimination than others. But mm. I feel like if you're a minority within the United States, even, like, coming from the outside and dealing with the United States, you're going to feel some type of discrimination. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like seeing this, seeing this from K-pop fans, K-pop artists. Me personally, knowing that they're my, knowing that from what we've seen at um, what you call a K-con, and then just looking at K-pop in general, knowing that you're minorities, it's mm-hmm. like I'm not surprised to see what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about their influences from the culture and yeah. why they're and why they're doing what they're doing and why they support it so much. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like I said, like. We all, all by we all face some type of discrimination. You know what I'm saying? Some type of discrimination, some type of stereotype, right? That's not fair. That's not fair in all co- our culture. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And like to see them reach out is to see them reach out and see everybody reach out just it makes it ten times more powerful. You know? For sure. Especially them being across the world. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like they, they, they don't, they're not directly seeing what's happening to us in mm-hmm. the United States. You know what I'm saying? And. Um, and I'm sure, like, um, that's why maybe a lot of them don't speak up because they don't directly know the issue that's going mm-hmm. on. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They live in a completely different country where maybe the, where the things work are entirely different. Yeah, they're oblivious. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. So for them to actually speak up, um, be very well informed, and even contribute to the cause, I think that's amazing. For sure. Facts. And overall, man, just being. Being not, we're not even new to K-pop because it's been like three years now. Yeah. But <laughs> experience this moment with you guys and seeing how supportive you guys are and how you guys are the ones commenting like, "Yo, you guys gonna say something? Please speak up." And it's like we we speaking up and we happy that you guys are speaking up as well. Right. We appreciate you guys so much for that support. But fellas, it's time to get to the nitty and gritty. Mm. It's time to get to these rappers. It's time to get to these labels. It's time to get a little ignorant in here, yo. I ain't gonna lie, man. Some of these niggas, man, yo, like my nigga Blueface was wilding for that. He clip. bugged the fuck out. <laughs> like, what, did, what did he say? I, he I'm said, not. I'm he not. was like, yo, let me get that George Floyd discount at a store, like, but it was recorded. Yeah, like, what and the he put it up. Fuck? Nah, he's wilding. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and that's why I'm like, these niggas, like, I feel like, like, even with Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne had a backtrack when he said, because Lil was like, yo, there's good cops. This that um one um uh, and then he was like and we also kill ourselves more this and that Trina also said yeah, um Trina. the protesters are like animals that they don't do that when it's black on black crime I didn't even hear about that uh, Why Trina, she said, like Trina that? said she's like when a cop pull me up I'm gonna have my license and registration as if nobody else has their license and registration when they get pulled over and killed it's like that's it, not the issue yeah, that's they killed us because of our skin color it's not because wow. of our license and registration, registration. Trina. <laughs> like what? That's that's yeah, absolutely like, crazy. <laughs> and the thing is, it, people say you take it's like yo, but black people kill more black people, and it's like yo, my nigga, black on black crime. They say was a term created by um white supremacists, just like um when um Rush Limbaugh said that um the fuck did he say? He said that uh, there's, there's, thing. Thing. there's, there's no things white privilege was yeah. created mm-hmm. by left wings. Mm-hmm. Well, black on black crime, same way he said that is. A created term because no matter if you if I live in an area and it's more people of that there that's so there's more so there's more white on one crime white on white crime technically because there's more white people in the yeah. world mm-hmm. and white neighborhoods they do crimes on each other so mm-hmm. you you 
there's white on white crime just as more as black on black crime. Mm-hmm. So when we as black people use the term, um, and rappers, I'll say a lot of rappers love saying that shit like, "Yo, but niggas kill niggas." It's that's not the point. At the end of the day. A cop's job is to protect you, so exactly. the nigga is getting paid <laughs> to do a job and mm-hmm. then doing it the complete opposite of what they're supposed to do. Why the hell are you bringing up black? Like, exactly. it, it has not Those two issues have nothing to do with one another. And that's mm-hmm. like me saying, yo, but army niggas kill people overseas. That has nothing yeah, to do with like, yeah, different you know what I'm saying? Here, <laughs> the only thing that's similar is death. That's it. Exactly. But in the color, a black man dying. That's the only similarity, but mm-hmm. people don't. It's not like people don't care about black on black crime, but like, if I'm on some street gang banging shit and we got beef and you shoot at me and I shoot at you, and we cho- we knew what we were doing and we chose that. Yeah. If I'm a civilian going to the store, mm-hmm. let's say someone gave me a fake twenty and I gave it to you and you caught the cops, and I didn't sign up to get killed. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and that's what I feel like with black on black crime is like a lot of black on black crime is like niggas from the streets. Don't want you to protest over that. Like you get me, like a nigga mm-hmm. shooting, like yo, yo, uh, Huey just died. Y'all should protest because they knew what life Huey put, went to go do. Mm-hmm. The problem here is that we have to focus, and I feel like rappers and um and rappers love saying that, but black on black crime, and I, you're missing the whole point. Like that's mm-hmm. not the point, and I'm I'm not disappointed because just like there's bad rappers, there's good rappers. Shout out to Kanye, he donated two million yep. and mm-hmm. protested. Yep. Shout out to J. Cole, he didn't say a word, but he went and protested. Facts. Kendrick went out and protested. Mm-hmm. And I like when the rappers touch the streets because it shows more to me, Corona, off rip, niggas are scared. And no matter what, anytime a, a high profile person's out, they can get hurt. Exactly. The mm-hmm. fact that those two, and they still, them three artists I name at that level. Yeah. And it's touched the streets with the people. Mm-hmm. It shows you... Bro, YG was in LA with 50,000 motherfuckers around him. In the middle of the motherfucker, he's in there like, fuck 12, fuck 12. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, like, I, it is so dope because at the end of the day, bro, one thing that rappers got to understand, you wouldn't be shit without the, the, these people that's losing their lives. The people that's African Americans, your audience, your fans, you gotta be there for them. Mm-hmm. It's like that's why it's dope to see the artists that's gonna be there on the front lines with these fans that feel the same way, that have the sentiment, and they want somebody that they listen to, that they idolize, to have that same sentiment and be with them on the front line and shit, yo. And it's like I'll be a buck, right? The shit that that you brought up right there is is so is so prominent because of the fact that. I don't get why nobody. I don't get why people bring up other shit when we can, we need to focus on one thing. At a time. Yeah, like, yeah. That's it's crazy. like killing us, killing each other. Yes, that is a problem. But we gotta get rid of one problem like at a time. And and officers that's de- like designated to protect us, killing us, and not getting any consequential issues after. That's the biggest issue right here. Let's focus on that. Don't bring up shit. Unless he's supporting this, right? Because yeah. it's only mm-hmm. you're only gonna be looked at negatively because at the end of the day, bro, this is something that we've been dealing with for so too, for too long. For you to be bringing up different shit that's not a part of the main issue, like yeah. that's that's. Mm-hmm. The and I don't right. understand people bringing up those issues like Trina, a little Wayne, or like yeah. you guys grew up in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got, <laughs> like there's no coincidence why black and you know, Hispanics people why we live in these places. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They put us there, so obviously. In bad situations, bad um, environment, bad things are going to happen. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Is it is it crabs in the barrel in a lot of these cities. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Not Especially a lot of people make awesome. it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, there's going to be a lot of violence within uh, one another, but that's not the issue. The issue is that, you know, pe- the cops are killing us. Yeah. So, like, this not, let's not bring on that black and black crime. When you guys bring that up, it's not a... It's not an educated thing, especially with you with that much attention. I feel like either you're trying to bring attention to yourself or you just forgot that this is not the attention you yeah, want. Yeah, like, where's yeah. your PR? Yeah, yeah, yeah like, what? <laughs> where is that nigga, yo? Chief Daddy was trying to save Trina. He was like, hold on, Trina, hold on. He's like, yo, he's like, yo, Trina kept going. I don't know, she won. Wait, 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 wait. Here's the thing. What? Wait, wait, wait. Al Chief Daddy, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, what are you doing? And here's the thing, too. What people, what these um rappers, celebrities... Like, what they don't realize when they make these statements is that, yo, you're, when you make a crazy statement like that, especially with, especially kind of with what Lil Wayne said, with the whole, like, cops saved my life, cops aren't all bad, you yeah. know what I'm saying, right? It's like, you're not speaking 
for you're speaking for yourself. You're not speaking for the majority. Like because yeah, just because <laughs> just because you had a good experience or you had a good experience doesn't mean that the majority of us don't have these good experiences. Mm-hmm. Why is it you can't you can't base you can't tell me how you can't tell me how to feel and like expect me to feel the same way as you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because maybe our experiences may have been different. You don't know what's thinking. You don't know what's going on in my mind. And it's a problem when you're seeing all of these black people, all of these minorities out here protesting and saying that this is an issue for mm-hmm. you to make such a for you to make such an ignorant comment like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. Nah, and like even like with with everything, we gotta be you gotta be mindful of what you're saying in this and understand that people and understand other people's have pers- perspective. Not everybody thinks like you. Mm-hmm. Not everybody thinks like you, and this is a time where we're all trying to band together to make one thing right. And you're over here trying to be all over the place. Well, this person's acting ignorant because this, this person's doing this because that, and it's like, yo, it's not helping anything. It's just making the situation worse. Yeah, you know? that's the thing about it. I feel like this moment, there's a separation between artists and rappers that really are here for the African American plight, and other other artists that's here for like the attention. Because you know this, there's, there's people that's not, I'll say, politically literate or capable of really correct. like. Putting their things out there. So that's why I was like, I feel like as an artist, you got to be able to understand, like, maybe I can't articulate it, but I can go to a protest. I don't got to, I don't got to say nothing to protest. It's like, like, you don't have to say something just to get the likes or attempt to get the likes just off of saying something just to say it if you don't feel it. It's like, find your way, your medium of being able to like, put that out there that you want, you support the Black Lives Matter and it doesn't. At, like, it doesn't take away negatively from the actual, like, movement or, like, from yourself, actually. You feel me? As an artist and as a brand. Yeah, it's like, it's dope to see the artists that do are sticking out. The Michael B. Jordans that are out there protesting. Yeah. The Wale's that are out there protest- protesting. Little even TJ was out there little, um, protesting. YK Osiris. Yeah. Shout out to even Sarati, uh, mm-hmm. BBG, the YouTubers, mm-hmm. too, that would be out there. Um, protesting and using their influence and we just hope that this conversation doesn't die down this has always been a problem and it'll never stop being a problem it's been just as relevant as it was 10 years ago today Thanks. and I feel like we all as ra- rappers influencers k-pop idols uh, artists actors we all have a platform to speak out and to shed light on and I feel like we all people are, p- are playing their part and I f- I'm grateful that you fans out there, subscribers are supporters of the Black Lives Matters, and you know because we, we are black and minorities. Yeah, he's he's Dominican. Like, no, I want to say he's, if you Hispanic. Yeah. Dominican. <laughs> nah, yeah. no, he's you white. That's black. why I'm like, yeah, yeah. he's not yeah. white, yo. And he's fully black. <laughs> yeah, we're black. we're black. Dominicans, Dominicans Puerto are Dominican, Hispanic. You guys are black. Don't fool yourself. Believe it or not, there's, not there's, there's more. There's more Dominicans that are my color. That I see. Yeah, stop coming at my nigga Wells. He can like, let him live. All right? I ain't worried about y'all coming at me. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Dominican, Puerto Rican, y'all black. That's it. Black, nigga. <laughs> Afro- Phoenix, you're black. Afro- you're black. <laughs> We're about to uh, get into a quick little clip of um, DC just had some words he wanted to say. So you can get, we can get right into that right here. All right, man, that was DC with his uh, statement. Shout out to him. Salute to that man. He had a lot to say. Um, that was a week ago, so um, some of the charges and uh, stats he was saying is a little different. I think um, all four police officers, or three police officers were all charged. Mm-hmm. Um, it went to second degree murder. Correct. The autopsy did show that he w- it was a homicide, so they did murder him. Mm-hmm. That's fact, so that is not an argument anymore. And we can't wait to see um with the when it goes to trial and what the verdict is gonna be because mm-hmm. man I'll tell you that's gonna that's gonna be a very impactful day on the world. Facts. I, I just hope they make the right decision. Yeah, yeah they, that, they oh have my. to, bro. They have to. They have to. Yeah, because even we'll min- go crazy. I, even, I don't like in Minnesota, it. they said that they might be disbanding the police department. Yeah, in you total, and yeah. hiring their own their own secure like yeah. private whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, a small town, man. It's actually pretty big. Yeah, it's big. That's all I'm saying. I'm actually kind of shocked that they're doing that because they must have some sort of outsourcing to like Minneapolis, bro. That's a they're probably, it's probably on some shit where like their cops are doing dirt for so long. Yeah, they're tired of it, like bro. Yeah, and it's probably like yo, we can't let this go to the news. 
so, you know what I'm saying, or media outlets. Mm-hmm. So let's just get rid of them completely. I feel you're probably yeah. some shit that can uncover. Yeah. That's like, you know, before it gets to that, let's just disband them and, yeah, go from there. And justice for Breonna Taylor, too, as well, nice. too, man. Like, if there's any petitions that you see in order to provide her with the justice that she deserves, make sure you sign them. And all the diff- different lives of people that also lost their lives that haven't got the justice with officers and everything. And also RP to Ahmaud Arbery, um, that occurred in February where he was jogging. That was before. Yeah, that was before. That was before you're right. And, um, a mm-hmm. retired cop, so he wasn't an active cop. Retired cop, murdered him. So rest his soul, Eric Gardner, mm-hmm. um, Michael Brown. It's a, it's, even it's, the ones yeah. that never got any shine because yeah. yeah. it's, it's not mm-hmm. like they they're the ones that help spark movements. But there's so many that no one will ever know. The martyrs. So rest in peace to them as well. And we just hope everyone out there, these protests should make y'all feel happy. So just be positive because the world still has a lot of humanity. And to our generation, all that shit they were saying, our generation is going to be just as important and just as impactful as the civil rights and all that. Because all these moments we're doing, the biggest protests in history, and we're the first generation to protest through social media. Come on, guys. Mm. The money is, we're going to change the world. Facts. And so... Thank you guys so much for supporting us with this podcast episode two officially done. Yes, sir. We got one and two episodes that are gonna be in the playlist, so you guys could check those up. No, for real. Oh no, this is one more thing I just want to say before we end. One um, more thing I do too. Um, <laughs> guys, um, regardless of everything that's going, regardless of what the verdict is, you know what I'm saying. Which we're praying that the verdict is guilty. You know what I'm saying. Like, remember, this is still. Like this is still a fight for us, so we got to keep fighting no matter Facts. what. Like mm-hmm. th- this isn't, it's not just like all right, guilty and no, nah, we got to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting because if we don't, then this is gonna continue. This cycle is gonna continue happening throughout the United States. So that goes with pro. That goes with protesting, always fighting for what you believe in, voting. Make sure that you guys vote. Like everything, every little bit of anything plays a big role into this. So make sure you guys. Keep playing your part, even after the victories. Yeah, my message, my final message is to white people. I feel like white people, I, there's like a lot of rumors that a lot of white people feel uncomfortable in situations like this. But I feel like you guys should definitely feel the most empowered because we're protesting because we don't have a voice. So mm-hmm. you guys have the, wow. the biggest voice, you know what I'm saying? So like you guys have the opportunity to make a change and help us out here as well. So if you're white and you really feel moved on what's going around in the United States, around the world... And I think it's up to you to make sure your voice is heard. Yeah. Don't wait until it's close to home, like one of your friends, family or something for you to speak. Don't do that. Do it now so we can actually save as much lives as possible. Yeah, we all in this together, man. Globalization, you know, it's not even just a country thing. It's all around the world. Let's get it popping. So make sure you guys go out there. If you could protest, protest. If you could protest through social media, protest through social media. If you can donate, donate. If you want to go vote, vote. But make sure you just do something to help spark a change for the future of our little kids you know my little nigga Rob little nigga (laughs) (laughs) little nigga what's up (laughs) my nephew man it's your first time here definitely won't be your last so make sure you kill murder and smash smash that subscribe button I go by the name Rob Sidera T the Haitian Prince and you can check out our podcast playlist below episode 1 and 2 episode 3 is coming soon can't wait for that one you already know man I go by the name Rob Sidera T I'm that hip hop guy, that rock guy, that pop guy. Yo, that's the music guy. Check out all our musical playlists. Shout out to all my Haitians. Shout out to Black Lives Matters. Sock by say now boule bien. And before, Haiti was the first independent black country. And they said, when has violence ever changed anything? And the Haitian Revo- Revolution is proof. Facts. Mm. Sock by say, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's your boy, Well Z, Anime King. Make sure you follow me at Wells on the score RT. Can, whoops. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say on these comments. I'm, I'm really interested and um, I'm happy that we're engaging in the conversation. Yo, it's a man, the myth, the maniac, Wilkins underscore RT. Remember, guys, it's crucial. Go out and vote. Remember to always be great. I want to hear what you guys have to say in regards to this because this is a discussion that needs to be happen- that needs to be happening all the time. And remember, even when the battle is over, we must continue to still fight because the war goes on. Yes, sir. Patrick RT, man. Just know you. We really love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all being here right now. Stay safe. Spread that peace, baby. And it's that settles it podcast. And that settles it at the round table. table.